Hi everyone, welcome to your August Alchemy Scopes. Um, it's been intense lately. We just uh, had the new moon and we also simultaneously are going through a Venus Saturn square and Mercury conjunct Mars opposed Pluto. So there could be quite a bit of, <laughs> hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Um, we could have quite a bit of anger coming up, quite a bit of irritability coming up, a lot of deep issues arising, causing responses and actions, thoughts of kind of aggression. So hang in there and really stand back when those come up and really look at the bigger picture because know that this is the cycle that we're in. And with the Venus-Saturn square, it's very intense because there's a necessity, there's such an obligation to mature our values, what we love and what we do, to put detail into that which we love and that which we do. It's quite intense. So you might be feeling some limits uh, imposing upon you recently. But it is a new moon, it's a new moon in Cancer it occurred at 23 degrees cancer and the sabian symbol the symbology that's imbued within this new moon that's um you know flavoring this entire next cycle is a woman and two men castaways on a small island in the south seas and it's an interesting symbol um Kaipacha was referring to Dane Rudyer and his assessment of the two men and the woman in this scenario. And it refers to kind of the three aspects of self, which is what Dane Rudyer um, referred to, which was, um, you know, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And so the mental was male, the, the emotional was female, and the spiritual was male. I can't say whether or not I agree with that assessment, but in this particular assessment, it's interesting because the symbol is on an island in the South Seas. And there's something about being on an island that's a bit of isolation, a feeling of isolation and limit. I'm going to move this. Again, my arm's getting tired here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So there's a sense of isolation of all those aspects of self, of the mental, of the emotional, of the spiritual, feeling isolated now. There could be that. And also it's the South Seas. And the South typically refers to below and underneath. It could refer to the underworld and going into the depths of self. So it could be thematically for you that this month, this cycle is just diving deeper, especially with these astrological aspects that are taking place. So let's dive into the scopes for the individual signs. A reminder that these are evolutionary scopes, the, meaning that these are about your soul's evolution. Since I began The Alchemist Awakens, this channel is devoted to your awakening and your soul's evolution, your maturity, your stepping into your power. It is about you diving deep into your essence, self, your soul print, and fully expressing your infinite power and we have a long way to go i mean the majority of humanity has a very long way to go most of them aren't very awake yet so um anyway so when you look at these scopes know that the six points which is the sabian symbol which we just talked about so the symbology that's imbuing the story in this cycle and then when we look at the I Ching for the particular signs micro cycle, the micro theme, and then we look at the spread, which pulls up the, um, the particular story that's unfolding for your soul's growth. And then we look at the ascended master for guidance, the archetype, which are the qualities that are asking to be matured in you. And then of course the Dakini, which 
is evoking within you the embodiment. So what embodiment would optimally serve you to handle, to flow with this particular cycle for you. So this is a holistic uh, scope. I hope you enjoy it. So let's move on to those. Hi Taurus, welcome to your I Ching microcycle for this month. You received number 40, Deliverance. And the two trigrams that make up this particular hexagram are thunder above, water below. And this is the meaning. After a thunderstorm or any time of extreme tension and obstacles, a period of new clarity and fresh opportunity follows. The storm has the effect of clearing the air and suddenly reducing atmospheric tension. Deliverance is at hand. In the wake of a storm on land, deliverance appears in the form of new color and life, which bursts forth in all the fields and flowers. In the wake of a storm at sea, deliverance takes the form of land itself. Make a clean sweep of the past and move deliberately. Great clarity of purpose and renewed vigor can follow the healing of old wounds. Hi Taurus, welcome to August 2015, your Alchemy Scope spread in cards. So, a couple things. One is I have the um, Lady Morgane Cancer Moon card here that I wanted to have present in this spread. They're beautiful as you can see. And um, I'm going to read a little bit here about the qualities of this particular card, but of course it represents the Cancer Moon. And um, this is perfect for us. And of course it imbues all of the qualities of, the can of Cancer. The divinatory meanings as written here are beautiful. Withdrawal into the self, growth and development, safety and security, protection, nurturing, healing, feelings, sensitivity, the need to let go of the past, moving forward, flow, learning from and integrating the past, strength and virtue. I love that. So a couple things. One is this month I'm using my Siri deck again. This is my own custom deck that I use for my own uh, purposes for those those of you who have tuned in know that and then I pulled four um, uh, Dame Darcy tarot cards so that we can look at what's unfolding for the month you know per week and then we'll go ahead and shuffle your Ascended Master and your archetype so let's go ahead and lay this puppy out this is the theme that is likely to be unfolding for at least some, if not the majority, of Taurus-centric folks watching. So let's see what's going on. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, this is, again, a simple spread. The synchronic spread works. Um, it, the reversals come up to provide, or excuse me, the reversals that come up in the initial position act to engage more information to come so this is lovely you're going to be the theme this month Taurus for you is going to be memories you're going to be remembering things and they're probably going to be a mix of things it's going to be positive memories and not so positive memories coming up over the course of this month uh, and that's to be expected, I should say, because there's been so much shifting over the course of many years for many people, and certainly the last many months. So there's going to be some reflections, memories coming up for a lot of people, for a lot of Tauruses. You're going to feel, well, first of all, let's go into the spiritual realm here because this is quite powerful. So there is a healing process, a powerful one, that's underway for you, Taurus. And it has to do with what is being purged 
out of your life, what's being cleansed out of your life, and also what's, this is also the physical body. So physically, you might be he going through a healing journey. You might, some of you out there might be doing fasts or purging yourself in a way that is cleaning your system. And this also could be healing is also general and also so is purge. So it could be that the healing, we'll keep these upright. It could be that the healing that's underway is general. It could be home. It could be relationships. It could be, again, body. And it could be, too, that you have had an illness that you're currently contending with, which is beautiful because this is transforming you. The cleansing and purging that you are now undergoing, Taurus, is transforming you. And this is beautiful. I will say that you're going to, due to this, due to the process, you're going to be having some odd or unusual um, feelings coming up. And this has to do with the memories because the purging, when we purge our bodies, we're purging cellular memory. We're purging toxins and information that's been in the body that has not served. And often, you know, fat encapsulates toxin. So if you are doing a cleansing or if you are healing a tumor or some sort of a diseased condition in the body, you are releasing deep memory. And you are going to have, there's emotional ties to not only memories, but to cleansing because it's all linked. This is all linked. Now it's interesting because Taurus, for you, so this is beautiful, yeah? So, but in the mental sector, there's going to be a lack of, perhaps, for some of you out there, a lack of focus, a lack of attention to the grace that is unfolding for you. In other words, there's going to be a lack of appreciation for what is occurring. Um, there is grace in this situation. Whatever, whatever is being purged, and cleansed and whatever is creating the situation that needs requires you to cleanse is a graceful right thing what's happening is right it's correct for your soul path but you will have memories that will trigger a flux of emotions this is what i'm getting from this card is that you're going to have feelings that are going to maybe spike and vary from, you know, feeling maybe quite good about what's happening to feeling very negative about it. So there could be a flux here. Now let's look at the weeks. Let's look at the weeks. So this is week one. So week one, Taurus, King of Wands shows up. In the general readings, it's hard to designate this as a man. It could be a woman, but it's a fire sign person. This is also, by the way, a quality set. I notice that a lot of readers rarely refer to these cards of the qualities that are imbued in the card. This could be referring to yourself and the, the you know, qualities of the, the king of wands within you in the first week. However, it could be a person showing up that is fiery, creative, probably humorous, full of life, full of vigor, that is going to play some role with the theme that's unfolding for you. And perhaps he could evoke some emotion, or excuse me, some um, memories within you. Now, if it's a quality within you, the quality set of the King, King of Wands is that fiery nature, that action-oriented nature. So keep that in mind for week one. So in week two, this is beautiful. So in week two, Ten of Pentacles shows up. And the Ten of Pentacles is about great abundance, yeah? Great financial abundance, great abundance in all ways. 
fabulous card. I love this card. So week two could see you receiving a great abundance of money. This could be money. It could be possessions. It could be support of some sort. It could be support for this cleansing that's underway. But there's some material support that you're getting. Again, it could be money. So then in week three, the world comes up reversed and the world is supreme success. It's really ultimate success. And in the deeper meanings of the tarot, this is connection to the infinite. In the more mundane world, this is success. And for it to be reversed simply means that there could be a delay with you receiving the full benefit. Like, for example, for this theme that's unfolding, it could be that you sense the success that's eminent, but it's just not quite arrived yet. But it will arrive. It is coming. It's around the corner, essentially. So that's week three. That's an energy set for week three. And then seven of pentacles comes up. I think I just turned that around. I'm going to have to look back on the video. I think I turned this around. So seven of pentacles reversed. I'm going to read it both ways. Sorry, Taurus. So seven of pentacles reversed. This is about a delay in the harvest. So it could be that you're putting a lot of energy into your work or into something, into your body. See, the pentacles is the body as well. It's physical reality. So the ten of pentacles could also have to do with the body. So seven of pentacles, let's say reversed, could be um, a delay in benefit, a delay in receiving the harvest. And you might feel exhausted with that. You know, you're waiting for a return and you might not be receiving it. Now, upright, it means that you are harvesting, that you are gaining the, um, the benefit of the energy that you've put into your project, your work, and you're receiving monetary benefits or other sort of support. And again, this could be money. And I think, too, with this particular spread, it could be body as well. So let's set that there. Let's go ahead and pull the Ascended Master because this is going to pull in, as you know, this is Doreen Virtue's Ascended Master deck. And as you know, these pull up not only the guidance that serves you, but also um, an additional thread to the meaning for the story for this particular cycle. So let's see what wants to come for Taurus. Okay. We have some birds visiting outside. This is gorgeous, Taurus. So this is Krishna. Find the blessing in the current situation. Now this speaks absolutely directly to the no focus on grace that came up here. You know? That it might be that this month you're thinking, you know, this is this stuff that's going on is awful. But this is talking about there's grace in this that's going on for you. Nothing, nothing. I'm going to repeat that. Nothing in life happens without serving your greater good. And this is wholly about finding the blessing in the situation because I guarantee when you look back on it, you're going to see it clearly. But the thing is, now you can pull back your perspective and see the blessing. We really do, we're all needing to really mature, grow up, and pull back our perspectives to a more holistic stance so that we can understand easily what's going on and what it's serving in our lives. So find the blessing, Taurus, in whatever's going on for you. If there's a delay in harvest, you know, if there's, you know, there's benefit that's coming, but there's a delay, 
See, the world and the Seven of Pentacles reversed. Again, if it was reversed, there's a delay and a delay. So if there's a delay for you, find the blessing in that. Because what it's doing is it's redirecting you to attend somewhere else. And I guarantee you, if you put your focus on grace, and if you really get to an authentic place of gratitude about what's going on, then the world will reverse and the harvest will come. So this is Carolyn Miss's archetype deck. And these, as you know, if you've tuned in in the past, pull up the archetypal qualities, the qualities that want to be evolved in you this month. This is what your soul is asking you to evolve. It's what growth edge do you need to face in order to serve you? Let's see what comes up. So Femme Fatale, you know, it's interesting because for a while, Femme Fatale was coming up a lot for, this, for the signs. So let me read it first and then I'll show it to you. So the lower frequency attributes, Taurus, of Femme Fatale are inappropriate use of sensuality, attachment to money and power. So that's interesting. So this could easily, these weekly th threads with the pentacles could easily have to do with money then. So inappropriate use of sensuality, attachment to money and power. The evolve, what wants to be evolved within you is highlights the erotic energy of the feminine, opens your heart when your dependency is rejected. So perhaps there's a love component here that is driving the particular healing that's underway for you. So this could be that there is a dependency that is needing to be addressed. And it's about keeping your heart open when that is rejected. And what I will say again, it goes back to the grace card, Taurus, because you know, if you're not in a state of self power, self wisdom, self love, self understanding, self care, self attention, you are and you're looking for that, for somebody else to provide it outside of you, it's going to create a mess. And that mess shows up in physical symptoms in the body and all kinds of things. But it's interesting because there perhaps is a dependency that's tied to money. Yeah? It could be that. I'm going to show you this card again. It could be that there's perhaps, for some of you out there, some dependency with regard to money that wants to be addressed here. Again, the money or the body, they're both coming up and they're both tied. I mean, the value of self reflects in value that shows up in money, in financial reward. So value begets value. Value of self begets value that comes back at you. So so Taurus, I think that's it for now. Let's go ahead and look to see what else we have for you this month with the Dakini. Hi Taurus, so let's dive into your Dakini and see what came forward for you this month. You received number 35, Pele. And again, a reminder that the Dakini is representing the embodiment, what goddess to embody this month, so to optimally serve you over the course of this next cycle. And again, I'm reading here from Penny Slinger's writings. To read the full PDF, you can link to the online library below this video. Pele's fiery essence manifests at, as the fire within the earth. Dakini Pele comes from the South Pacific volcano goddess Pele. The word Pele means molten lava in the Hawaiian language, indicating that she is the volcanic substance itself, not a spirit living within it. She can be seen as young and beautiful or as an old woman. She represents the inner lifeblood of the earth, the lava that flows beneath the crust and erupts as volcanoes. As Mother Yin represents the solidity of the planet, so Pele is her fiery, volatile inner nature. She is a fire dakini, creative and destructive. When the earth erupts, it can bring devastation, but also creates the very ground of being, 
volcanic soil is rich and fertile. Goddess Pele is renown, renowned for her jealousy and rage. In our pantheon of the divine feminine, Dakini Pele offers the transformation of these sentiments through erotic dance and passionate expression. She is chosen to represent the Hawaiian Huna tradition and way of being. Huna synthesizes the male Hu with the female Na, offering a way of harmonizing inner and outer experience in a meaningful and purposeful way with the spirit of Aloha, which is the breath of life flowing as love and compassion at its heart. So that's what I have for you right now. But again, if you'd like to dive deeper, there is more here and the online library link is below.